Okay, let's talk about factoring, and specifically, we're going to talk about factoring things or, uh, look like this in algebra. So what is this? Well, we would call this a trinomial. It's a certain type of polynomial, so that's what we're going to be talking about in this particular video. But uh, uh, as my little title says here, factoring a way to always get these right. Well, I'm going to be talking about getting these type of trinomials correct in terms of being able to factor them. A lot of uh, algebra students have a difficulty uh, factoring. That's quite normal uh, for whatever reason you know that might be. But you know there is a lot of students that struggle with factoring, and uh, that's typically the reason why they struggle in algebra. You cannot pass an algebra course if you don't if you do not know how to factor, because factoring is everywhere. So you got to be great at factoring. And knowing how to do problems like this right here is part of the skill sets that you need to know about factoring. It's not everything, but it's one part of it. I'm going to cover uh, quickly, go over kind of the other skills that you need to master. But we're going to be just focused in on how to deal with these type of trinomials in this particular video. But uh, if you think you can factor this, maybe pause the video and uh, put your answer in the comment section. It'd be interesting to see, you know, uh, hey, can you factor this? And maybe you're already great at factoring. You just want to kind of, you know, uh, see, you know, what I have to say about it. But I'm going to, you know, give you a technique here that if you've been struggling in factoring, especially with trinomials, uh, that this will work every single time. Now, I want to say one quick thing about factoring in general. If I give you the number 10 and I said, well, factor the number 10. Well, most of you can be like, oh, that's 2 times 5 or 1 times 10. That's correct. These are factors of 10. But if I said, if I said factor 7, you go, well, that's only 1 times 7. This is a prime number because the only factor is 1. And that is true. Okay, so 7 is prime where 10 isn't because we have factors that are other than uh, 1. And uh, the reason why I bring this up is that sometimes you'll be given a problem like this and it's not factorable. In other words, we can't find two binomials and factor this. So that could be the case as well. So just because you have a trinomial doesn't mean you're guaranteed 100% you know, every single time uh, you're gonna find factors. Sometimes you'll uh, write this uh, as your answer, prime or not factorable. So just keep that in mind as well. But I'm gonna get into all of this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. Uh, but basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you pass your course. If you're taking a, uh, an exam, uh, and I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, any exam that has math on it, uh, GRE, GMAT, uh, ASVAB, ACCUPLACE, or CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, there's a ton of exams out there that have a dedicated math section on them. So, you know, you just, you know, there's all sorts of reasons why people have to take these exams, you know, whether they want to get into nursing school, or go into the military, go into graduate school, uh, college placement, et cetera, et cetera. I can help you prepare and pass those exams if you homeschool, have a great homeschool math curriculum you might be interested in. And if you don't have uh, good math notes right now, maybe you don't have any math notes, maybe your dog ate your math notes. Well, whatever the case might be, you need something to study from. So you can use my math notes. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But I've been teaching math for decades, and it's been apparent to me that those students who have great math notes almost end up doing great in mathematics. So start taking awesome notes. You'll thank me later. Okay, so let's talk about factoring in general in terms of an algebra course. All right, so when you first start learning factoring in algebra, you start off by learning about the greatest common factor. So if I uh, gave you something like 2x plus 10, and I said factor that, well, we have to use the, uh, this concept of the greatest common factor. So this thing, it would be 2 times x plus 5. And you need to know how to deal with the greatest common factor. That's the first area, uh, the first kind of skill you learn in, uh, in terms of factoring in algebra. So if you don't know how to uh, factor out the greatest common factor, you need to go back and review this. It's kind of the opposite of the distributor property. But I have tons of videos on all the stuff that I'm going to be talking about here in a second in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. Or better yet, maybe you want to sign up for like my Algebra 1 course. 
Okay, so this is the first skill that you need to have in terms of factoring, okay? Now, uh, typically, once you've learned about the greatest common factor, you move into things uh, like what we were talking about here, trinomials, stuff like this, 2x squared minus 4x plus 10, or let's say plus uh, 9 to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, something like this. This is a trinomial. I have no idea whether this can be factored or not. I have to stop and think about it. But this is a trinomial. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about here is how to factor trinomials. Now, there's two types. Uh, I kind of classify them as a case one and case two. This is an example of a case two trinomial. Now, the reason why um, I'm saying it's a case two trinomial is because the number in front of the X or the Y or whatever the case might be is something other than one. Okay, so you can see this number is two. Okay, but if I just have something like this where Okay, the number in front of the X is 1. Now, we don't write a 1, but if it's just like this, this would be a case 1. Okay, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video is how to factor case 1 trinomials. So this technique, if you um, understand it for case 1, the, there's a similar technique that applies also for case 2. It's a, it's a little bit more involved, but it's, it's, it's uh, uh, a little more involved than, than a procedure I'm going to show you for case 1. But it, there is a procedure for case 2 as well. Again, I have uh, videos on this in my YouTube channel. And, of course, I think it teaches very thoroughly in my algebra courses as well. Okay, so if you know how to deal with the case 1 and case 2, well, then you know how to factor trinomials, which is a big part of factoring in algebra. Okay, so let's just talk very briefly about some other things you're going to need to know. So uh, you're going to need to know about special rules, okay, special factoring rules, things like the difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared. That's uh, a plus b times uh, a minus b. So you've probably seen that. And if you haven't seen that, you will be learning this. So there's a lot of other rules, but this is what I'm talking about uh, in terms of special factoring rules. And then there's other techniques, uh, things like group factoring as well. So this is kind of the whole uh, family of skills that you need to know to be successful at factoring. And you, and you do need to know all of them. Okay, so again, uh, make sure you understand the greatest common factor and then, uh, you know, how to factor trinomials, special factoring rules, and group factoring. So we're just going to be dealing with this one component, case one trinomials. But once you get this down, okay, it's this, you know, you want to learn this one skill at a time. Once you get this down, then you could learn this technique uh, with case two, and then you can move on to other things. Um, again, if you already know how to factor, because there's, there's different ways to uh, approach factoring to learn it. This is really kind of directed towards students who've been struggling with factoring. Okay, so if you already know how to factor, you're like, oh, I don't like, I don't like your technique. I can do this. Uh, I can do this problem using my way, or the way my teacher taught me. Then that's outstanding. Stay with that way. Okay, but if you've been struggling with factoring and you want to have like a little procedure, well then let's get to it. Okay, so again, we're dealing with case one uh, trinomials, and here is a lovely case one trinomial. Okay, so it's a trinomial. There's three terms. Okay. Now, to be even more specific about this, uh, you would call this a quadratic trinomial. Um, you know, pretty much. I don't want to get overly technical here, but this thing, we're dealing with things like this. Okay, where the highest power is two. Okay, not three. So we have x squared plus three x minus eighteen. Let's go ahead and see if we can factor this. Now, if we can factor this, we're going to get a uh, two binomials. Okay, so that's what's going to have happen, you're going to have two binomials, and because this is x squared, you'll always have one x here and one x here, okay? So what we're looking at is what do we put right here, right? That's going to be the answer. So that's the objective. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, so what's this technique? Well, let me go and erase this here and focus in on what we do. All right, so there's a positive one right here, right? I just want you to take this positive one. Now, it's not going to change. Uh, you don't technically have to do this, but I want you to get used to doing this because this is, this applies to that case two technique that I was talking about. So you're going to take this one. You're going to multiply it by this last number. You got to make sure this is in standard form, highest to lowest power. Okay. So in other words, you have your x squared x and then your number. And this could be y's or m's or t's. It doesn't make a difference. So one times this negative 18. Okay. One times that last number is negative 18. So that's the number we need to consider, negative 18. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to list the factors of negative 18. And always start this way, okay? Start with the easiest factor, 1, 
okay? And then just start increasing, okay, in terms of all the factors, you know, for negative 18. So this is the way I like to do this. Let me show you here. Okay, so uh, I like to list out the, the factors, and, and you're always going to duplicate the factors, always duplicate the factors. In other words, 1 times 18, 1 times 18 is going to be negative 18 because I have negative 1 times positive 18 or positive 1 times negative 18. Okay, so both of these here, when I multiply the, multiply these together, I'll get negative 18. Now, I started with 1, so I'm going to increase. Hey, does 18 have a factor of 2? Uh, yes, it does, so I'm going to put a 2 there. So 2 and 9, 2 and 9, negative 2 times positive 9 or 2 times negative 9. Okay, so now I have 3 and 6 and 3 and 6. This is also uh, factors of 18, so I have... Uh, negative 3 times positive 6 or positive 3 times negative 6. So I'm listing all the factors down here. Now, as you get better with this technique, you won't have to list all the factors down. Okay, Just trust me on this. You'll just be able to see the combination to pick. Now, what are you looking at? Like, okay, oh, great, I listed all the factors. Well, when you list all the factors, we're really looking at the sum. Okay, So if I add up these two factors there, negative 1 plus 18, that's a positive 17, or 1 plus negative 18, that's negative 17, right? Now, you don't have to do all this work. I'm just kind of listing this out here uh, 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 just to kind of show you how this works. So down here, 3 plus negative 6 would be negative 3. And we're looking at these answers, okay? We're considering the sum of these factors, okay? Now, I know this seems like a lot, but believe me, this is very, very easy once you practice this. So... Now, what are we looking at, though? Okay, well, you could see here, this is what I want, because I'm looking to see, uh, I'm looking for this number. Okay, this number is a positive 3. So whatever the number is in front of that middle term, that middle coefficient, here it's a positive 3. I'm looking to see here, do I have a positive 3? Ooh, I do right there. Okay, so negative 3 plus positive 6 is equal to, a uh, when I add these up here, that's equal to positive 3, and that's my answer, okay? So basically, right here, remember, uh, I, uh, this is an x squared, so I'm going to have an x right there, an x right there, and I'm going to have a negative 3 right here, and I'll have a positive 6 right there, and I'm done, okay? This is the factors x squared uh, plus 3x minus 18 is equal to x minus 3 times x plus 6, and if you got this right, Excellent. Let me go ahead and give you a happy face for doing a nice job. Now, I know this is a lot of explanation, and you're like, well, that's quite a bit of work to do this. It's really not that bad, okay? You just got to practice this. But this is a sure-fire technique to use to get this stuff uh, correct 100% of the time, okay? You just have to list all these factors correctly, look for the, uh, the, the sum of the factors such that it's this middle number, and then these will be right here, the answers that you're going to put into your binomial. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and practice this again. And let's go down. And really, uh, I'm going to show you another great way to improve in your algebra. So what I like to do is uh, create the answer and then make the problem. Okay, you're like, hey, whoa, that's kind of crazy. Well, no, this is excellent because this is going to help you build your uh, algebra skills in terms of your multiplication. So let's just make up something Let's take two factors. So this would be our answer right here, okay? So x plus 4 times x minus 5. So here is the answer. Let's make the problem, okay? So to do that, we're going to take the answer and we're going to um, use the FOIL technique, okay, and multiply these together. So that will be x times x is x squared, x times negative 5, negative 5x, 4 times x, positive 4x, and then 4 times negative 5, negative 20. So... It's really good that you continue to practice multiplication, factoring. They just go hand in hand in algebra. So here is the problem. Okay, so when I add up my uh, like terms right here, I have x squared minus x minus 20. The factors of that is this. This is the answer. If I said factor this, here is the answer. But you're kind of making this problem. So if you don't have any practice problems, you can just make up your own problem and kind of reverse it, right? Make the problem and see if you can get back to this. So let's go ahead and focus on x squared minus x minus 20. Let's use that, te let's use that technique that I just showed you, and let's see if we can get back to um, these factors here. Okay. All right, so here we go. 
x squared minus x minus 20. Again, you take that one, you're going to multiply by this negative 20. So it's negative 20. So let's list the factors of negative 20. So 1 and 20, 1 and 20. Remember, I have to alternate because uh, it could be negative 1 times positive 20 or 1 times negative 20. So I'm listing out all the factors, and I'm keeping my uh, on the lookout for what? Right here, that's a negative 1. Okay, negative 1. That's what I, uh, I'm looking uh, for the sum of the factors for the uh, that add up to negative one. So I can clearly see no, I'm not getting negative one here. Here I'm going to get I'm going to get eight, a positive eight or negative eight. So my eyes draw me to four and five. I'm like, oh yeah, four and five. Yeah, I can get a one out of that. So right here, uh, four times negative five, of course, is negative twenty. But when I add these up, four plus negative five, that's negative one. That's what I want. Okay, so these right here is going to be the answers. Okay, I'm going to have, remember, this x squared, it's always going to be an x and an x with these case 1 trinomials. So here I'll have a positive 4 plus 4, and then I'll have a negative 5 right there. So uh, x plus 4 times x minus 5. And if I'm not mistaken, x plus 4 times x minus 5, hey, looky there, that was the problem we start, uh, started out with. So you can just kind of, you know, practice these case 1 uh, trinomials by just making your problem up, you know, seeing if you can multiply uh, correctly using a foil, te foil technique and then practicing this particular uh, procedure. But this will work 100% of the time, okay? If this uh, trinomial is factorable, you'll see this middle middle number show up in this list right here, okay? And that way you don't, uh, for those of you who've been struggling with other techniques uh, to uh, factor, you know, this is a good technique just to fall back upon because you need to know how to factor. And again, this case one uh, situation, that's what we're dealing with here, okay? Uh, this case one, the, the, now you should know how to uh, factor all case ones. But once you get really good at this technique, the, the technique for case two is similar. It's a little bit more involved, but it, you can you apply this technique with just a couple of additional steps and file, uh, be able to factor case two trinomials as well. And then you're good to go with trinomials. And then you can move on to these other special rules, factoring, et cetera. But uh, again, make sure you start off by knowing how to factor the greatest common factor. Again, I have tons of videos on this stuff in my algebra and pre-algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. Um, and of course, you know, in my uh, math courses as well. But if this little video helped you out, you know, that's the whole intent of it. Uh, please go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, I have a ton of uh, content to help you out. I'm posting new stuff all the time. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.